Did you know in Angular, a component template doesn't have to be HTML? It can also be an SVG. This is what I'll show you in this tutorial. We'll start with a simple app displaying two lists and transform them into dynamic SVG charts. Along the way, you'll learn how to render SVGs as a component template and add interactivity using Angular features. Sound interesting? Let's dive in. Okay, here's the application that we'll be working with in this tutorial. It's pretty basic. We just have these two completely different lists of data, one for fruits collected and another for cars sold. Nothing fancy, right? But we wanna convert these to horizontal bar charts to make the displays a little more compelling. Let's look at the app component to better understand the current setup. Here, we can see the code for the fruit collected section. To display the list of data, we use this chart component. This is somewhat of a generic component that has an input for chart items. The data for this input looks like this. It's an array of objects with a count and a label. And the setup is pretty similar for the car sold section. Here's the chart component. And here's the data. So basically the same thing, just different data. Now let's look at the chart component. This component is really simple right now. It just has the basic chart items input. Let's look at the template now to see how the input is used. Okay, this too is pretty simple. We have an unordered list and a simple for block to render the values for the items in the list. So very basic, but that's what we're starting from. Now, in this case, we wanna make the entire contents for this chart component into an interactive and dynamic SVG. And you may or may not know that in an Angular component, you can use an SVG as the template. So let's do that. Okay, now we need to update the extension in our template URL property too. Okay, now let's make a dynamic SVG chart out of this data. Let's swap the UL with an SVG tag. Let's give it a width of 420. Now, for the height, it needs to be set dynamically based on the number of chart items. So we'll use attribute binding for the height attribute. The rows will be 20 units tall, and we'll need to multiply that by the total length of items in the array. So it will be 20 units taller for every item in the array. For the items in the chart, we'll use an SVG group element. Within this group, let's add a rectangle element for the bar. For these, we need to set their widths dynamically based on the count from our data. So let's use attribute binding again, this time for the width. Then we'll use our item count and we'll multiply it by 10 units. Now let's give it a height. We'll go with 19 so that there will be a little bit of space between the bars. Next, we'll need to add the vertical placement for the bar on the SVG coordinate system. For this, we'll use attribute binding again with the Y value this time. And since our rows have a height of 20, we can simply multiply our index by 20 to provide proper vertical position. Okay, let's save and see how this is looking so far. Nice, now we have some dynamic bars in our chart, but we're not seeing the labels anymore, right? Let's fix that. Since this is an SVG now, we need to use a text element for our label. 
Okay, now what this means is that we need to also place the label on the SVG in the proper location. For this chart, we want to place it to the right of the bars. So we need both dynamic X and Y positioning for them. Let's start with the X attribute. For this, we need to use the same calculation that we used for the width of our bar. Then we can add 5 to it. This will place it 5 units to the right of the bar. Okay, now let's add the Y attribute. Let's use the same placement that we used for the bars. Okay, now let's save and see what this looks like. Well, it's close. The horizontal placement looks good, but the vertical placement is off. By default, the text element alignment in an SVG is based on the baseline of the text. So right now, it's placed too high. Let's add some vertical units. Let's try 15. Okay, let's save and try this again. Nice, that looks better. This is pretty cool, right? We're able to use traditional Angular features right within an SVG. Now let's take it even a little further. Let's add some logic to highlight the active item when we click on it. Let's start by adding an active index signal. The initial value will be negative one. Now, let's use click event binding to update this index. So when we click on an item, the active index will be equal to the index of the item clicked. Now we can use class binding to add an active class when this happens. Okay, let's try this out. Now when we click on the items in the charts, the active class is added, which highlights them green, and then it gets removed, which returns them to gray. So now, not only is SVG dynamic, it's also interactive. Of course, this is a pretty basic example, but hopefully you get the idea. So, in this tutorial, we turned basic lists into dynamic interactive SVG bar charts. We learned how to bind attributes, render SVGs as component templates, and add interactivity with Angular features. If you found this tutorial useful, don't forget to like, share, and subscribe for more Angular tips and tricks. Thanks for watching.